Good evening everyone and welcome to our Tuesday evening devotion. My name is Junko. I'm one of the pastors here in Victory. And later on, we will worship the Lord and we will pray to God. But right now, let me encourage you as we begin. See, the Bible tells us in Matthew 18 verse 20, Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am amongst them. And so today, I believe that God is with us. Even though we are just gathered uh, online, but we are gathered corporately in His name. And that's why today, I believe, because God is present, He will listen to us. Lord, today, we just come to You, God, and we are thankful for Your presence. Lord, help us today, God, to bask in that presence, Lord. Today, Lord, uh, we will pray about our challenges, but right now, right now, Lord God, may we prioritize that presence before us. May we prioritize you who is here gathered with us, Lord God. The great King, the Lord Jesus Christ, is with us tonight. Lord, help us that in our hearts, Lord, our focus as we worship is to glorify you. This is my prayer tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's just worship the Lord today.
Lord, we want to thank you for the opportunity to gather, Lord God. Lord, even if it's just online that we gather, we believe the Holy Spirit is with us. As I have mentioned a while ago, that you are with us. And Lord, as you as as you as we are here, Lord, we pray for our challenges. I want to give you some time, church, just to lift up whatever challenge that you have to the Lord in your own words and silently in, in the next couple of seconds, just pray to God and tell Him the challenges that are with you today. Lord, I want to pray for my brothers and my sisters gathered here tonight. Lord, there are some of us with heavy hearts, Lord God. Lord, I am just praying for those who are sick, Lord God, or have family members who are sick. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I pray that your healing will come to them. I pray for those who are experiencing lack, financial lack. Lord, may you provide an overflow in their lives today, Lord God. I pray, Lord, for those who have relational problem, problems with their relationship, with relationships with regard to their spouses, probably sons, daughters, parents, Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I pray that you be at the center of their problem. And I know that if you will be at the center, Lord God, of any relationships, Lord, whatever kind of problem, I know, Lord, that you can solve it, Lord God. This is my prayer tonight for my brothers and my sisters. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of us will say amen and amen. Once again, I want to say good evening to each and every one of you. Can we just give a clap emoticon to our uh, Lord Jesus Christ as He has gathered us here tonight. And tonight, we are still in our topic, Knowing God. And as we begin, let me just uh, define grace. Yes, that's right, grace to you. See, grace is the unmerited favor of God. It is where God shows us mercy kindness, and patience instead of the judgment that we deserve for sinning against Him. God's grace cannot be earned by our actions or sincerity. It cannot be lost in the same way by our rebellion or sin. Grace is based on the character of God and not on our sincerity, performance, or ability to keep the law of God. Otherwise, grace would not be grace. See, I, de I decided to start off with defining grace to you because our topic tonight is God is gracious. And we are going to look at uh, the verse in Psalm 145, verse 8. And let me read it to you. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I believe this very short verse shows us how God expresses His grace to us in three ways. Now first, God expresses His grace by being merciful. God is a merciful God. See, I'm reminded of the story of Hagar. Uh, we can find the story of Hagar in Genesis 16. See, Hagar was a maid servant and she was sent to lie down, to lie with uh, Abraham so that Abraham might have a son. But when she became pregnant, the hearts of both Sarah, the wife of Abraham, and Hagar began to war with each other. And so Hagar fled because of Sarah's jealousy and envy. But God reached out to, Sa to, to Hagar and after, after an encounter with the Lord, this is what Hagar said, let's go to Genesis 16, verse 13. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing. For she said, truly, here I have seen him who looks after me. 
See, after hearing from the Lord, Hagar comes to the realization, Hagar comes to the conclusion that God sees her. She was not alone in her misery. Now, how many of you know that sometimes in life, people will treat us badly as if we don't exist. As, and, and they will not care about us. But God sees us. God always sees us. There will, be, there will always be people who will ignore us, will not give us the time of day, will not care for us. Sometimes we will feel because of them that we are alone in our struggles. We are alone in this world. Now, we need to be assured that God sees us. Even in, in, in situations like this. And He will not forsake us. That's why today, if there are single parents watching us today, single parents like Hagar listening to us today, I just want to say that God will, be, will be a father. God will be a mother to your child. He sees you. God is a merciful God. Now, the next thing the passage tells us is this. God expresses His grace by being slow to anger. Now, if you read the whole of the Old Testament, you can get an idea of the character of the Jews, of the Old Testament people. You will see how stubborn they were, deserving God's anger and wrath. Like the time after they were rescued by God from slavery in Egypt. After some time when they experienced a challenge, when they got hungry from the lack of food in the desert, this is what they had to say in Exodus 16 verse 3. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Now if you can try to imagine uh, what's happening here, if you can try to, Im to imagine this from the perspective of God. You have just rescued them, the, the Jews, the Old Testament people, from slavery, uh, from slavery in Egypt. And what happens is, at the first sight of a challenge, like lack of food, they say that they would rather have stayed as slaves in Egypt because there was food. Now, if you were God, what could you possibly feel? Uh, if you were the Lord, hearing this, of course you feel betrayed. No? Baka kung ako si Lord, pitikin ko lahat itong mga ito. Eh, no? sobrang, uh, sobrang lack of faith nila. Sobrang uh, parang in their hearts, parang uh, tumatalikod sila just because nagutom sila. No? Uh, niligtas mo na nga sila. Ganito pa yung sasabihin. But you know what? You know how God reacted to this? This is how. In the next verse, verse 4, Exodus 16, verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. God gave them food in the form of bread from heaven or manna. In fact, later on, God would even provide quail, will provide protein for them. This incident actually would characterize the Jews as they would always be instances in their history wherein they were unfaithful to God. But God was always patient with them. Instead of immediately punishing them, instead of immediately dis disciplining, disciplining them, God would send prophets okay, to ask them to repent. However, eventually, uh, God would punish them through the Babylonian exile. But still, judgment was not their end. Like we saw in our last series, Tayo, God allowed a remnant to return, to rebuild Jerusalem, to rebuild the temple and even the walls. See, we, modern-day Christians, can learn something from this. This is what we can learn. Let us take advantage of God's presence. Let us take advantage of God's patience. 
towards us. You know, if you know in your heart that there are areas in your life that need to be surrendered to God, if you know that you need to repent of certain sins, please do so before things are too late. Now let's go to the last expression of grace found in our passage today. God's grace is expressed in His abounding, steadfast love. And in my opinion, the best expression of God's abounding, steadfast love is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. See, the Bible tells us in John 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. You know, man's sinfulness means that a holy God can never have fellowship with him. But because of God's abounding love, he sent his son to be the ransom for our sins. And, and because of what God did, because of, what, of Jesus coming into this world, offering his life, sacrificing his life, we have eternal life. And that church is the summary of how abounding God's love is for us. Let's just pray today. Lord, we are thankful that you are a merciful God. Lord, thank you that you are slow to anger and that you are abounding in steadfast love. Lord, we, if, if, if we read the Bible, all of these things that I have mentioned, Lord, all of these things we can see in the Bible. And Lord, we are thankful that God, the Old Testament people, Lord, those who are mentioned in the Bible, who receive your mercy, Lord, your love, your being slow to anger, Lord, it is not just exclusive to them. That even we today, Lord God, modern day Christians, Lord, can receive all of this. In fact, Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ is with us even today. The Lord Jesus Christ, for those who are willing to repent, for those who are willing to believe, they have the Lord Jesus Christ with them. And because of this, they also have your abounding love with them. Lord, help us that, Lord, as we experience your grace, as we experience all of these things, Lord God, we will make you, God, our priority in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray, God, that we will be obedient to your word, that, Lord, in our lives, your word will be manifest and you will be glorified. This is my prayer tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's just continue to worship God today.
Lord, as we end our Tuesday evening devotion, I pray, God, that each one of us, recipient of your grace, Lord, that we will become an expression and a conduit of your grace to others. Especially, God, those who most need your grace. I pray, God, that as we become an expression of your grace, Lord, Lord, they will believe and have faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, that you will be glorified in their lives. Receive the Lord's blessing today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and His peace be with you. God bless you, church. Our Tuesday evening devotion has ended. We will see you again online next Tuesday. God bless.